Hey guys, the MMO50 here. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do right now, so I'm going to try and keep this short. Um, those of you who haven't watched any of my videos before, well, I'd ask you to watch more of them, but after this you probably won't, because I'm kind of on a controversial subject here. Well, controversial for a lot of other people, not so much myself. Putting this as bluntly as I can, uh, I've seen some of the Saw movies, uh, 1, 2, and 3 to be precise. Uh, I haven't seen any of the later ones, maybe bits and pieces, but I haven't seen any of the later ones and I don't plan on it anytime soon because, well, as bluntly as I can put it, Saw sucks. As a series, just completely. It does. It really does. And I understand that people are going to hate me for saying this, but just try and understand this. I've seen the first three. I understand the concept. You have these. You have this guy who has a sort of misplaced feeling of how, not necessarily the human mind works, but he wants to. Ch he, the idea is that he wants to make people better people by exposing them to horrifying situations, by making them suffer in order to realize just how badly they've messed themselves up, and it's kind of like a, a method in psychology where you. Uh, uh, expose someone to the thing that they fear in order to make them realize that there's nothing to be afraid of. You forcibly expose them so that way they become accustomed to it and they build up a tolerance. But in this case, the fact that Saw is even a horror franchise, the fact that it's even called horror, it's really a misnomer because uh, it's not horror really, it's just gore. It's not scary, not really. The first one, if you saw it the first time, you know, if you see it on the first time, sure, you're shocked at what's happening. Who wouldn't be? I mean, the grisly portrayals and whatnot. But, it really, it's not horrifying. It's not something that really scares you so much in that it surprises you. And, you know, you can watch something. You can watch a classic horror movie like, uh, what's a good example? Uh, you can watch a classic horror movie like Psycho, for instance and just what's going on, the atmosphere, the way it's put together, it can still scare you even if you've seen it half a dozen times. Even more than that. Uh, what's another good movie that I can think of that's a good horror movie? And I'm not a horror movie connoisseur, I'm just saying this just because it's true. What's another good series of horror movies that are good? Um, well, the first few, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. That is a scary movie because it knows it has so only so much to work with and it uses what it has. The original Halloween, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, the original Friday the 13th. All these movies are scary because of what they are. And what they are is mostly dark, depressing, and brooding. But, well, right, mm, well, Nightmare on Elm Street, maybe not so much brooding, but the horror is portrayed in such a way that it builds up the atmosphere, it slowly escalates. And Saw does that too over the course of the movies, but it's really not a good film series. And I'll try to explain why. Horror is something that has to be built up. You can't just say, ooh, this is scary just cause. No, you have to build it up over time, over the course of the movie. You have to make people understand. You have to use visceral, you don't use always visceral imagery, you have to use imagery that just strikes at the core of someone's mind. And body parts by themselves aren't going to do that, especially in this day and age. It's called torture porn. I don't really agree with calling it porn of any kind, but that's another matter all by itself. Basically, what Saw fails to do is it builds the atmosphere, but it does it in completely the wrong way. A lot of horror, a lot of good horror for that matter, is based on the idea that you don't always have to see something in order for it to be scary. A lot of traditional horror movies, you go back and watch them and you pay attention, it's not so much what they show you, but what they don't show you, and your mind has to fill in the blanks for itself and try and guess what happened. That's a lot of the scary part. You see someone get pulled off screen and you hear them screaming and wailing and all of a sudden you hear a, just a smack sound or a slashing sound or something. You get that stimuli from what that, from them dying, you don't see what happened to them. Your mind has to fill in the blanks. And 
that is that's truly scary because you have to your mind can come up with some pretty amazing things and some pretty scary ones all by itself and a lot of modern horror movie remakes are subject to failure because they don't have subtlety there's a lot of horror is subtle it's not something you'll necessarily notice but it's something that you will just feel you don't have to see it but you can feel it it's palpable it's there with a lot of modern horror there isn't a lot of there isn't a lot of subtlety there isn't a lot of palpableness there isn't a lot of feeling of dread a lot of it's just gross out and gore and that can work in some cases but it really isn't horror so much as it is just shock it's just a shock moment it's like yeah, you see it once, you're not shocked the second time you see it because it wasn't supposed because it's just supposed to shock you for a moment. It's a jump scare sometimes. But if you've seen it once, you're not really going to be scared about it again unless it was built up in the atmosphere. You get you watch the original Halloween, it's a scary movie because it builds up the atmosphere. You can see it half a dozen times and it'll still be scary. I ramble, but the idea here is of Saw that this guy, who we find out has an engineering degree, and yes, I've read the synopses for the other Saw movies, he basically has a sort of degree in engineering, his wife dies, and then he gets in a wreck, and he said, and according to what I've read, he becomes, quote-unquote, appreciative of what life's, how fragile life is, because he's having cancer, because he has cancer. So he wants to try and show people that there is meaning in their lives even if they themselves don't necessarily see that there is value in life and it's difficult really to I can understand you know he feels like desperate times desperate measures I get the idea but the way he goes about it by inflicting torture upon other people I mean I get it he went through a, a traumatic experience and he figures that putting other people through that same kind of trauma will make them realize, like he did, how fragile and valuable life is. But most people I've met that went through something traumatic, myself included, I've gone through a couple traumatic things, don't wish that kind of thing upon anybody else. They don't want other people to go through that kind of thing. I certainly don't. If I went through something horrifying, I definitely wouldn't want to put myself through it. So why would this guy want to? That's my major problem with a lot of the Saw, with the Saw movies. And, you know, the fact that this guy does all these Machiavellian, is the best way to put them, uh, plans. Uh, the first few movies, he, it's actually pretty reasonable. But once every other movie, once they start ramping it up, it just goes into refuge and audacity territory. To the point that, you know, if this was the real world, it wouldn't even be physically conceivable. The first movie, you got two guys locked in the same room. Okay, you know, it's a, it's disgusting, it's depraved, but you know what, it's a, it's a, uh, the first Saw movie actually does classical horror pretty well, but the gore is a bit much, but, you know, it does classic horror all right, I should say. But the other, but on a whole, the Saw series sucks simply because there isn't anything in the way of subtlety, especially as the films go on. There isn't much in the way of subtlety, and that hurts the film. Because, like I said, a lot of what good horror is, is building up the suspense and the dread over a period of time. But with Saw, you pretty much know what's going to happen. These guys are going to get mutilated, and horribly so. And, at the, and the idea behind Saw Fish eventually becomes, you know, not so much to be scared of it, but to pretty much think, well, I wonder what's going to happen next, and it, who's going to get off next, so... That's the, that's the whole point, and I don't see much a point of going to a movie where you pretty much know everything that's going to happen. Now, yes, there are movies that you can go to that you can kind of predict as you're watching what's going to happen. You can sort of guess ahead, but with Saw, you watch Saw 1 and Saw 2, and you can pretty much guess whatever happens in the next few Saw movies. You may not figure out exactly what happens in terms of the details, and you wouldn't be seeing the imagery, but you can pretty much guess, after watching the first two movies by themselves, what's going to happen, to an extent. And the major thing that I have, the most major problem I really have with Saw as a series is that not only is it not really scary, not only is it not suspenseful, not only does it do anything right in terms of horror by itself, except for very minimally here and there, 
is that it's just completely unreasonable. In this day and age, that kind of thing, yes, terrible things happen all over the world every day. Terrible things done by terrible people to other people. And generally, you know, it's unheard of. And generally it's not reported because, you know, dead men tell no tales as the old pirate shanty goes. But the main problem I have with Saw is that it just isn't realistic. And I know that's not really a good complaint to make when a quote-unquote horror film isn't realistic because a lot of horror films aren't realistic at all. The Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, they aren't realistic per se, but they definitely have, there's a sort of logic imbued in them. But Saw bases itself pretty much heavily grounded in a real-world situation. This guy doesn't have supernatural powers. He doesn't have any sort of occult mysticism. He doesn't have any sort of uh, uh, ability to see in the future, nothing. He has no powers except for the fact that he knows how to create machines that can harm or mutilate or eviscerate anyone he happens to think of, and usually in fairly lavish and gorish ways. But it's... You would think that someone who went through a traumatic experience involving a car wreck wouldn't want to put other people through horrifying experiences with machinery like that because, well, you know, he doesn't, you wouldn't want to put someone through that kind of pain. You've experienced it. Why make other people experience it? And yes, I know, demented psychopath and all. But the fact that he continues to do all these things, even after he's technically dead, he's set up this stuff way in advance, you know, you cannot do this kind of thing secretly, especially considering the size and the breadth and the scope of some of the later traps that I've seen images of, of the later movies. It just wouldn't be physically possible in this day and age to do that kind of thing without, it, without tripping somebody's radar. And don't tell me that you could, because I understand that, you know, resourceful people and whatnot, but considering the fact that we're supposed to assume that he did most of this, if not all of this, pretty much on his own, with only one or two people really helping him at any given time, you really have to just think, you know, a man in his advanced state of cancer, let alone in his advanced state of age, and trying to do all this stuff, these Machiavellian uh, machines, or even the fact that there are other people who are doing this, you couldn't set up an operation like this without alerting some kind of attention, just from passers-by. I mean, what happens if someone just so happens to stumble upon wherever it is he's making these traps while he's making them? Does he kill them there or what? Basically, the, the logic, if there really is any, kind of falls apart rapidly. Too rapidly for the movie to really, for the movies, I should say, to hold on to any momentum. And it's, it's unreasonable. And, you know, once you've seen the first two movies at minimum, you know what to expect in every other movie, and you, even the first movie by itself, you get a, pretty much the gist of what's going to happen from here on out, and there's really no heavy build-up or suspense from there. It's just, okay, take this and amp it. Just amplify it from there on out, and it's it just doesn't make for, good, for necessarily a good horror movie. Another good analog to this would be uh, any of the number of horror franchises that I mentioned before, as they went on, they sort of became flanderized and you knew what to expect. The first ones, obviously, were scary and suspenseful, sure, because, you know, they were brand their own. But as it went on, usually the quality would drop because they were trying to go off of just the few details that people specifically wanted to remember over time, and that's not the best way to go about it. Basically what I'm trying to say is, is that these movies do indeed suck on that respect because a good movie, a good movie series, and I'm not talking about good movies, well, movies that are based off of previously existing stuff like The Lord of the Rings, The Chronicles of Narnia, the Harry Potter movies, people know what's going to happen in those, yes, but it's not really that you're not, that you haven't seen or you haven't read what's going to happen. That's not why they're good movies. They're good movies because you see the director's vision of what this would be like if this was real. And that's the beauty of those movies. With Saw, there really was no real uh, basis. It was just, see what we can work, take these and take this concept and see how far we can run with it. And it's not very well done, as and it shows. It, it wears out and it, it just doesn't hold up at all. 
and in a few years, if if not already, these movies are going to be dated because it's got it's like the Matrix. The movies sound cool and they have cool concepts, or at least in Saw they have revolting concepts and interesting ideas. But as time goes on, people it's not going to age very well because it's contemporary of the age in which it was created in. And you know, yes, there are films that are much better that show their age too. But like Psycho, that's an old movie. It's from the 50s, but it maintains a solid repertoire and a solid ma and a very well put together setup and everything else because it wasn't made necessarily to reflect the period in which it was in. Sure, it has 1950s people, 1950s cars and locations and clothing and whatnot. But if you were to take, if you were to swap those out with modern things, and keep everything else the same, keep the characters, keep the characterizations, keep the uh, uh, keep people acting the characters. If you were to swap out the clothing in Psycho, you wouldn't know, with modern clothing and modern uh, locations, you with modern uh, set pieces, you wouldn't notice as long as everything else stayed the same. With Saw, you can tell that it's not its not going to age very well if it hasn't already aged at all very well. With Matrix, it hasn't aged very well. Matrix has some pseudo-philosophical things in it, but it doesn't really hold up too well. And almost everyone admits that it doesn't really hold up too well anymore either. So that's how I feel about the Saw movies and kind of about the Matrix and a few others. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably going to say, nay say this, or God knows, you're probably going to hate me for saying what I've said and... For those of you who agree with me, thank you for doing so. Just leave comments in the boxes below. If you f disagree, feel free to say so, but let's not start a fan war over this. This is one person's opinion, and I honestly am not a professional filmmaker, nor am I a professional critic. No money's being made off of this. I'm just doing this because I just felt this way, and I really wanted someone to tell this to. So... Thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch any of my other videos, check the links on the top or on the sides. And hopefully you guys will at least understand what it is that I feel about this movie is at least somewhat valid. If you don't understand or don't like what I've said, then again, feel free to state your opinion. I welcome you to it. Just let's try to keep this civil, if nothing else. If you disagree with me, just keep it clean, guys. I, I, I ask that. If you can't, well... I can't stop you from saying something unclean, let's say, but I can at least ask you not to try and keep it civil. Thank you any thank you all for watching. See you all later. MMO50 out.